Integrated Pest Management. Rodents are looking for a home to raise their family. Don't let it be yours, please. So problems that are caused by pests, uh, customer perception. Um, there was, when I was in college, there was a person walking down the street in New York about two o'clock in the morning, probably going home from the bar. And they, they looked inside one of the windows of the deli and there were a bunch of mice just going to town, having a good time for themselves. Nobody is bothering them because it's dark, it's dark out and uh, there's nobody inside the facility. So they took photos, gave them to the newspaper and uh, caused all kinds of trouble. Um, damage to food and supplies and facilities. They'll eat up everything in, in sight if it's uh, rats or rodents. Um, they will chew on all the different kinds of stuff and they'll, they'll chew on it until they don't like it. If they just even went to the bathroom on a box, you have to discard the box and the contents. Um, they can contaminate uh, food preparation surfaces. So you clean everything down, you think it's all great. You come back the next day, well, you just cleaned it before you went home. No one's touched it. You have no idea what was running across it overnight. And they spread diseases. <clears throat> you want to avoid that at all costs. Uh, the, ant, the, the pests that you're going to have to deal with the most is going to be ants um, and uh, flies. Uh, flies, the best way to get rid of them is to have air curtains on all of your doors. Uh, it's basically a wind that, that shoots down. They can't fly through that. And uh, fluorescent lights inside that have the bug zapper and a way to catch them. You cannot, in a food service establishment, have the old fly strips. Don't They don't exist. Now, the mice, or excuse me, the flies and the ants, they don't hide. They don't care about you. They're going to be there, and they're going to be right up in your face. So you don't have to worry about, you know, finding them because they're, they'll, they'll, they'll be available to see. The mice and the rats, however, they like to hide, and so do the cockroaches. So we're going to talk about the signs that you'll see in your facility that you might, you know, give you a clue that you have some uh, mouse problems or rat problems. Um, gnaw marks. So if you see the side of a box all chewed up or uh, like, the, like a one like this or a tube or a pipe, um, they can chew through just about anything but metal. Uh, so if it's wood or plastic, they don't care. Uh, they have very sharp teeth, and uh, they're always looking to uh, make them sharper by ch by chewing on stuff. And they'll eat pretty much anything. They like food, but they'll eat the the other stuff too if they have to keep to keep themselves going. Um, droppings, you'll see droppings. Um, you'll see urine. Um, if you use an ultraviolet light, it really sticks out big time. Uh, you'll see like a grease stain or a, a dark mark on the wall because they're covered with grease. And their eyes aren't great. Usually they're nocturnal, so they're they're only out at night. And they'll walk across this this pipe right here, and you'll see all their grease get stuck on the wall. That's a good sign that you have a problem with rodents. Um, nests, they like soft material like uh, paper, cloth, hair, feathers, that kind of stuff. And they'll use that to, uh, to make a nest. And uh, if you see holes in your wall, if you see in like in the corner, you see gnaw marks around the holes, then you probably have a problem with some mice. Cockroaches are another thing that you'll find, and you can even see on here, there's a little bit of their droppings as well. Um, that's what those, some of the signs you'll see when you see cockroaches. Uh, they can be introduced to your establishment through boxes. So when you have a delivery, uh, you have a, a cardboard box. If you open the end of the box, and actually if I go back, to this one right here, you can see how it's corrugated. You have the line to go this way, and you can see the corrugated stuff, and it kind of goes up and down. It's kind of like a pattern like this. The cockroaches go right inside there. So a lot of times, your delivery person will deliver you cockroaches. You didn't order them. You didn't want to, You didn't have to pay for them, but they'll deliver them to you. They can come in bags uh, from your workers, personal bags from your workers, um, and your person, your personnel can bring them in as well. Um, that goes both ways, as a matter of fact. Uh, there's a picture here of the German cockroach and the female with the eggs. Uh, let's say you see this, uh, this cockroach running across the floor and you stomp on it with your shoe. Um, the bottom of your shoe has all kinds of rigid, rigid edges, just like, the, um, just like the cardboard box. So you wear that shoe home and you, know, you, you, you take it off and you, do, you go about your business well. Let's say you killed Mama Roach, but you didn't kill all those eggs, and those eggs are now in the in the groove of your shoe. Now you've just brought cockroaches to your house. So um, I make it a good policy never to bring my shoes home. They always stay at uh, school or at work, wherever I am. I change my shoes, and then I come home. 
uh, places a cockroach like to hide and live. Um, so this is a drain. They get water. They usually get food because usually particles of food will go down there. And if you go to get them, they go right down the little drain and they can hide from you. Um, this is the back of a compressor. Now, when you're in the kitchen, you have your refrigerator and you're using it. And you're opening the front and you clean the doors and you clean the inside where the food goes. But how often do you pull the thing out and check the compressor that's behind it? And uh, there's a couple of things that, that happen with, with this is it's warm and people don't bother that area. So the cockroaches will go and they'll stay there. And then when you go home at night, they'll come out at night. Um, so it's a great place for them to hide. And usually there's a compressor back here. And usually there's a condensation that comes off of it. So there's a pan and we provide them with water in the same spot. And I have this radio here. And I'm going to tell you a little story about when I was in high school. Uh, we used to once a month set off a bug bomb in our restaurant that I was working at. It was the first restaurant I ever worked at. And I thought it was great because uh, at least once a month, I was always working at night. I had to put everything into the walk-in cooler. Now, you might say, well, why would you think that's great? Because to me, I served it as a game. I, I played it like a game. Everything I put in, somebody else has to take out because I'm not working in the morning. So we went crazy. We put everything in that walk-in cooler. Anything that could move that wasn't nailed down, we put in there. And we thought we were doing a great thing because they're going to set this bug bomb off. And basically, that, that basically it is like a huge uh, round thing. And it shoots the spray up into the air. And the entire kitchen gets covered with this insecticide. And then these guys in the morning would come in and they would have to clean everything, wash, rinse, sanitize everything before they could start work. Oh, yeah, and pull everything out of the cooler. So I'm working there for about a year. We always had, you know, it wasn't a huge infestation, but we would always see cockroaches. And we would do this thing every month, once a month, we would do this thing. And so uh, one day the radio stopped working. So somebody decided, okay, well, we're at the time to get a new radio. They took that one outside and um, for whatever reason, threw it in the dumpster really hard. It broke open and literally thousands of cockroaches poured out of the, out of the, of the radio. So one of the things that we would always grab and put in the walk-in cooler was the radio. So we were giving them, uh, we, were, we were putting them away from the insecticide. Uh, from that point forward, every kitchen that I've ever worked in, I have never allowed a radio. And that's the reason why it's a place for them to harbor. Um, and it's something that you normally would not think to clean. Um, also, it causes all kinds of issues with uh, controversy. People want to listen to their kind of music. So as a chef, I decided that it's not worth it. Other signs uh, from cockroaches is you'll see these little tiny uh, pellets. They look like... Um, that's, that's, that's their feces. It looks like little uh, things of pepper. It's so tiny, uh, kind of leathery, kind of smooth. Um, if you see that, you know you have some issues. All right, uh, pest management program. So the pest management person should rely less on pesticides. I know the little dude that I have here has a, uh, a pesticide thing on his back and the, the bugs are all upside down. Um, but they can, um, they can build up an immunity to those pesticides. So if you keep using them and use them and use them after a while, they, they, lose, it, they lose their potency. Um, so you want to emphasize sanitation <clears throat> and exclusion. You want to keep them out uh, at all costs. And then you want to train your employees. <clears throat> and you want to use a licensed pest control operator. And I'll talk about that at the very end. All right, so deliveries, like I just said uh, before, Boxes of stuff can come in, and those boxes can have the the, um, the cockroaches already in them. So you want to make sure you use from an approved vendor, uh, a reputable supplier, a reputable supplier's uh, storehouse. They're going to go through the same process as you are to make sure that there are no um, rodents or um, any kind of pest of any of, of uh, in their facility. Uh, check all deliveries before entering the operation for signs of pest. That's a little tough to do, but do your best. Uh, refuse any shipments that you find wings or signs um, signs of pests like little wings or, or egg cases or body parts, uh, those kind of things. If, if you see that and you're pretty sure that that box has uh, has something in it and you'd rather be on the safe side rather than be on the, on the sorry side. Um, door, along with excluding them from your facility, uh, screens must have at least a 16 mesh per square inch uh, for the screen. And you should regularly check them, make sure that, they're, that there's, there aren't holes, 
that there aren't gaps. And if there are gaps and holes, replace the screens or fix the holes. Um, door sweeps. Uh, this is a picture of a person uh, screwing a door sweep on the bottom. And essentially, it's it goes on the bottom of all the doors. And when you close the door, it eliminates that gap between the bottom of the door and the, um, the floor itself. It uh, it keeps the, um, the rodents and the bugs out. Install air curtains. Um, I don't see a lot of these uh, anymore. I used to see them all the time, uh, especially in Florida they have them. And it's just basically right here is is it's just a huge uh, uh, air thing that shoots down. Um, never really was a fan of them with my chef's hat. I always blows my chef's hat off, but it stops bugs from flying in. And in Florida, we had a big open terrace where we would serve, and um, we wanted to prevent the bugs from coming into the restaurant itself. So that's why we had it, and it worked really well. Uh, mice. And uh, mice and rats like to come into your facility through pipes. They use it like a highway. Um, so you want to do things like this. You want to put like a mesh screen around all your pipes. You want to make sure that they don't—they can't through, th chew through uh, metal. Um, so you want to do that. Um, steel wool is also great. If you have gaps, put the steel wool in and then put this mesh on. They don't want to chew, th chew through uh, steel at all. Um, floor drains. You want to make sure that you don't have, like, this drain right here is uncovered. That's definitely, no. This guy has a hinge drain. So if it gets clogged up, you can you can work on it. But it's closed down and locked down. Uh, so uh, mice and rats, they're really good swimmers. They'll go down a pipe and they'll, they'll, they'll come into your facility through a pipe. Um, deny past foods, water, and hiding places. So the first step in that is throw out your garbage quickly. Uh, make sure your garbage cans are clean. Make sure that the ones that go outside have good solid lids and that they're closed and that they don't have holes in them so the water doesn't drain out because that also attracts uh, more um, pests. Recycle bins, same thing. Make sure that they're, um, that they're clean, that they have lids, that the lids are on. Just because you have lids doesn't mean that they're any good if they're not on. Um, make sure there's no holes in them and make sure they're on a hard surface. Um, outside and if you're if you're storing them outside um, food supplies should be kept six inches off the ground now this picture is a little exaggerated it's a little more than six inches and use FIFO so they don't have time to settle in and breed uh, FIFO is first in first out so uh, you want to make sure that all the stuff with the oldest dates that came in first is in the front uh, you you uh, your employees typically will not rotate uh, they'll reach in and grab the one that's closest to the front. Um, when possible, use dehumidifiers. Uh, so I put this in here just so everybody would understand what it is. What a dehumidifier does is it takes hot and humid air, it brings it in. Don't ask me how it does. It does some kind of compressor thing, and it turns it into water. Um, what ends up happening is you remove a lot of the moisture out of the air. The cockroach eggs like that moisture for hatching. So if you can remove the moisture, you are uh, you are decreasing their um, their wanting to be there because they can't uh, have their babies. Um, store dry dry goods in chemical and uh, commercial plastic containers uh, like powders and flowers and cocoa and nuts. Um, once you open the bag, even when the bag's not open, like I showed you, they'll chew through anything. Um, so they might chew through this plastic, but it'll take them a lot longer and, uh, you can, you can easily see what you have and you don't have to worry about, uh, cross-contamination or, um, the, uh, the, the, the bugs and, and the mice getting into them. Hiring your pest control operator. Um, you want to make sure that they're licensed. Uh, you want to make sure that they follow all the state uh, regulations and you want to call for references. You want to make sure that you're getting the right person for the job. You don't want to just hire somebody based off of an ad, something you saw on the internet. Um, call around, call call fellow uh, food service places, and make sure you get somebody who knows what they're doing, that does the right job. And make sure that they have their MSDS sheets, uh, that they take, if they use chemicals, that they take them with them, they don't leave them at the facility. Um, and that's pretty much it for pest control.